Hi. <laughs> okay, uh, today is September 30th, 2011. My name is James Leone, and I'm going to try, if I can, to do a presentation on the Andrew Starnes family um, from DeKalb, Tennessee. And the basic subjects that I want to cover today are, one, um, what what actually what what can be solved uh, through the information that's available online right now and what cannot what are what pieces of information are myths and what are not and what which pieces of information are actually assumptions and which are pieces of information I don't know where they got them from and which pieces of information that have been put out there I think are erroneous in some fashion but I I can only tell you that it's probably not right, but I can't tell you um, <laughs> what the right answer is just of yet with that. And I'm also going to connect it back to the family that I'm working on, so they'll have some meaning, some meaning to the people that, that I started doing this for. So, um, where do I start? I guess I'll start with, okay, so I recently done a presentation on Shepherd Cemetery and there's a individual there named Joseph Joe Joe Anderson Johnson he's buried at Shepherd Cemetery with his wife Fanny now Fanny was born Fanny Lewis and um, I don't recall I guess I'll just look right now how I've determined exactly that I, I, in census records, I know her father's a Monroe Lewis and the mother's an Anna. But how did I determine that, in fact, her mother was Anna Ellen Starnes? I hope to show. There's this pack. And I'm going to look at her death certificate first because there's just so many records. Uh, just to show, she be number five. And so, <laughs> never mind. Okay. I paused there for a second because I looked at a spouse's death record and I said, What? The Lewis's weren't daughters of somebody else? Okay, let's get to five if I could find. Oh, right. Okay, here's what happened. So, Fanny Lewis died in 1975, so I couldn't. You know, I, I don't have access to her death certificate easily. Uh, maybe I'd be able to order it through the state of Kentucky. Um, but, you know, why do that when there's a daughter, a, a sister of hers that died in the 1930s, and I'd be able to look at her death certificate. And I believe her name was Rossi Pro Lewis. Yes, she uh, married Robert Hartson Jeffrey. And so looking at number... I'm calling the third child or number three's death certificate. I could see that her father was Monroe Lewis and her mother was Anna Starnes, as listed here, with her, her being born in Tennessee. Okay, so that's how I get from, from that up to the next level. And the next level is um, who is Anna Ellen Starnes' father? And since there was a movement from Tennessee to Kentucky, you want to be sure you got the right one, so let's see, where is my, probably set it back down over here, because I just tried to do a demonstration and I got a phone call, but it's okay, I'll make it, um, where is <laughs> the presentation, probably will be in shambles by the time I get to it. And I don't have a pause button. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be... <laughs> oh, here it is. Okay, so here is Anna Ellen Starnes' death certificate. With Louis, last name Lewis, spelled L-O-U-I-S. Just things vary. And it's got Henry Starnes as the dad. Born in Tennessee, mother I don't know. So I look for an Anna and a Henry and a, Henry and a census record. And I also know that Anna Starnes didn't marry Monroe Lewis till 1876 in Graves County, so I know she's going to be in the census with her dad in the 1860 census, and so I look 
sure. And God tell me it's going to be in this pack over here. So, oh, also on her death certificate, she says that she was born in 1848, I believe. If I have that right. Yeah, January 13th, 1848. Or whoever reported it said she was born in 1848. In fact, she wasn't uh, because she doesn't appear in the 1850 census. So she, but she did appear in the 1860 census, and that was what I needed. And it shows here on this record that there is a Henry Starnes, Delilah, and that's the 1880 census. Of course, she's not there. <laughs> and Elisa, 1860. There she is, and she's in Benton, Tennessee. And later on. They move to, um, let's see, 1850, that's not later. They move to the Houseman's Precinct in Graves County, and she's still in there in 1870, because she didn't marry any of this until 1876, as I have here. So I know that we're talking about the same person. Now, it says Stearns, but... I know by the other records with Delilah's in it that it this in fact is Starnes. Starnes. Okay, so now I have some things to address. Now Henry Henry Starnes was born, let's just discuss this, to start out with what we have, what we know. So I have a basic setup here from census records, right? And he was born around 1811. His age seems to vary with the census records he gives, anywhere between 1811 and 1814. Okay, but still. And he's got a wife, Delilah, born around 1813. And all these different children who I'm not sure where they ended up. A couple I think might have ended up in Graves County, Kentucky, but I, may, I might have made the wrong assumption. I, you know. Um, so. And I, I don't have a marriage date, and I do a search, and I, I'm not finding anything in Tennessee for a marriage between Henry Starnes and, and, and his wife, Delilah, who I wrongly have right now marked as Starnes. It should be unknown. Okay, because I don't know yet. <laughs> Just something that's very important to do when you do these things. Okay, so there, here's a Henry. And since he got married in 1831, and all his children were born in the 1831s, I'm not going to find him in a nice census that's going to say, here's Andrew, here's Henry, here's his other brothers, and they're their birth dates. No, sirree. So, what I do have, though, and so I don't really have anything solid to report. I can't say by, I would expect I would be able to find a death record in the Houseman's Precinct of Graves, Kentucky, but I haven't yet. I got the... the the year of his death narrowed down, I think, between 1890 and 91. I don't know how I did that. I don't recall, but I think I have that nailed down. And um, But nonetheless, it would be, wouldn't be a death certificate. It would be just a death register, and a lot of time they didn't provide parents' names in there unless they were children. So that that's not a very promising lead. Okay, so what leads me back even to even mention in Andrew Starnes and Catherine Sherrill? Well, it's been asserted that these are the parents of Henry Starnes. And I'm not going to say, I, I'm not going to deny it, but I guess we're going to get into some of the nuances of what uh, the competen competency of evidence is and the degrees of, of um, um, assurance that, that, that you have that you've actually found the, the the ancestor you know that you've actually found the answer someone says this is the ancestor is it really we're going to get into some of how how much assurance do we have that that's the case and I and I'll just start out by saying it's limited assurance um, limited meaning that it's not absolute not meaning that Oh, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> it's more like we just don't have proof. At least I don't have proof. With what I have, everything on the internet, I, I'm pretty good at finting things. And now, if I were to maybe able to find a um, 
obituary for Henry Starnes. I tried looking last night. No, I found more obituaries for Potes than I did for Starnes, even in the um, Library of Congress's newspaper collection. But, can, but it doesn't mean that every single newspaper that's ever been published is going to be on there. There's a lot of newspapers that aren't in the Kentucky archives and scanned digitally and put online. And there's, a, there's a lot of them that that aren't in the Library of Congress's scanned collection of newspapers and put online. They just there aren't, aren't enough. And there's, you know, so the, the coverage on those things, even a newspaper archive, which I also checked, is pretty sparse. They do hit the Paducah Sun, all three of them, I believe, but that's about it. Nothing really that stands out in Houseman's Precinct of Graves County. No. Now, if I had my, if I can get my hands on a newspaper from that time from the Houseman, I might find something. But I don't have access to it. So from my standpoint, I can't say anything. All he knows is that Henry, Henry Starnes has appeared, birth date 1811, he came from Tennessee. And his migration points him back at the earliest date that I can see. But I'm still, I'm not going to, I'm not going to abandon the effort. I, there's a lot of details I'm going to go into here. Um, to Benton County, Tennessee in 1860. And the one that I pointed out earlier, the South Division of Smith County, Tennessee. Same wife, Delilah, which is the signature. And the child that carries forward from 1850 to 1860, her children are Charles Lodina. So, I get him back. I, I got enough points. I got a wife the same name, his same name, birth year around the same year, two children look about the same birth year, moving back. We, we get back to Smith County, Tennessee is what it was called at the time, but today it's called DeKalb County. So that places him in the area that Andrew Starnes is said to have been in. Um, and there's, there's said to be a grave marker for Andrew Starnes. And there's a couple things I'm going to go over, and I guess I'm just going to, since I am... How am I going to approach this? Well, I guess I'll, I'll get to both topics, but I guess I'll kill the 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 <laughs> the convenient answer with one stone to start with, and the convenient answer is, and it's not an answer, it's it's wrong, is that there's a story that Andrew Starnes was um, the son of a Nathaniel Starnes and Jane Williams, and Nathaniel Starnes and James Williams uh, are, is said to have left... Um, the United States and gone to Canada during the Revolutionary War and settled in I think on Quebec or Ontario, I think Quebec, what's now Quebec. Okay. In that story that's given, they say that Andrew Starnes left Quebec and came to Tennessee and married a woman named Catherine Sherrill. The first thing that I don't have any proof for, and I'll tell you this, is that it, that the Andrew Starnes that is only at, right now suspected to be the parent of Henry, as far as I know, um, th th there's reason to believe so, but there's no proof that that his wife's name was Catherine Sherrill. I have no proof of that. Even if I accepted that Andrew Starnes was the father of Henry, I have zero proof anywhere, any writing, anything that I can, I can find, anything I can find, and I've looked a lot. <laughs> Cheryl, no. People talk about Catherine Cheryl in their emails and their compiled genealogies on, on web pages that she was a Cheryl, but at the end of the day, there's no marriage record, there's no... I haven't found any death certificates for any of these individuals that were that came out of 
Henry's not going to provide a death certificate that names his mother as Cheryl, Catherine Cheryl. Anyone that died in Tennessee, <coughs> they, you got to order those at like, you have to look at the index. Their index only starts in the early 1900s. I have, let's see, of the ones that died in Tennessee, I've got three of them dead before 1900, so that's not going to work. One died in 1869 in Izzard County, Arkansas, and I may get lucky if I follow uh, the descendants of Susanna Starnes and what's said to be John McGinnis. I'll get to that. And then uh, there are McGinnises there, but whether it's a John, I don't have any evidence for that. And then um, when we get to, there's a Jane that was in DeKalb County and kind of disappears around 1860 with the husband John Williams, at least didn't really disappear, I just, there's so many records I haven't been able to follow her forward it said that John Williams died in 1859 and she survived him and she appears in an 1860 census and then after that I think maybe I tried to find, I couldn't find her, but anyway, she's probably, she probably passed away in Tennessee. She's born in 1808, before the turn of the century. To even get an index, to even order that death certificate, to hope that whoever reported it gave a name of the, the last name of the mother to get it, the record that way. Okay, then we have, um, of course, Henry. <laughs> Uh, Henry that's going to die in Kentucky, and I might be able to find uh, the first and last name of both of his birth parents in a register somewhere. Who knows? I doubt it, but it could happen. Okay, so that's the situation we're in. So far, we have a group of Starns that all, all seem to come out of DeKalb County, Tennessee. The reason why we have a problem it's because censuses prior to 1850 just give the name of the head of the household, and that's it. They don't have any other names. So, uh, in the household, they just say, well, we got a child this age range, we have a, a male this age range, a female this age, age range, etc., etc., down the line, but they don't really go through the whole thing. Now, why am I saying that this Andrew, oh, to address the issue of whether this Andrew Starnes came out of Canada and decided to settle in the in a remote crevasse of Tennessee, uh, where there's a, a now a large dam. Um, I present the burial record of Andrew Starnes, who died in 1842. Now, the reason why this was interesting to start with, <clears throat> and I'll get into this, and I also have more records that, that I'm going to show. It just is this is not. It's not it. It wasn't even a fake death. We're not even talking about a um, H. H. Holmes <laughs> death faking for insurance proceeds. I mean, we're, you know, this this is definitely two different people. Um, the reason is, is this Andrew Starnes that was that died in 1842 was so interesting to people is that he had a birthday around 1811, and um, Andrew Starnes kind of. Well, they see him in the 1840 census as the head of a household, but they don't see him in the 1850s. And they see, uh, presumably, uh, the wife of um, Andrew Starnes living with Henry Starnes. And let's get to this as to what year that was, and I really do need to address this one, too. Um, it wasn't 1880. It was 1870. not as organized as it should be for this presentation, but I will get to it. But she was, she did appear in the 1850 census, and her last name is Starnes. She's 78 years old, so if you take 78 away from 1850, you get 28 years into, okay, you're talking 1772 for a birthday, birth year. If not 1771, doesn't you know? Because people don't say they're 78 until they actually turn 78. So, um, this has been cited. Well, this is this is the mother. This is the mother of all these children, and she 
was living with Henry at the time. Um, Henry was the oldest son, uh, there, but there were three other daughters that had big families at the time. Um, I'm not necessarily doubting that this is um, the mother of Henry Starnes at all, except the only thing I can say, I mean, it's a 38-year differential there. It'd be really hard to argue that she's a sister of Henry. She could be an aunt, right? She could be a sister of Andrew. That never married. Let's see what it says her profession is, if, if at all. Doesn't have anything. And it says she's born in Pennsylvania. Now, if she's a sister of Andrew, that'd be a pretty nice lead. Um could mean that this family actually came out of Pennsylvania. And that I haven't looked into. But the belief is of uh, the, the belief that it was Andrew Starnes and Catherine Cheryl has been so strong, I don't know if anybody's really looked into that yet. And I'll try. I'll see if I can. The problem is I just want all I can really find out is if were there any Starnes in Pennsylvania? Okay, and there's a couple of stories that are floating around. And uh, actually, yeah, so here's actually, yeah, just to show you, this is the burial record for Andrew Starnes. It was born around 1811, according to other records. Died in 1842, around the time Andrew disappeared. <coughs> He's buried here at the <coughs> Quebec. It's so messy to read, but basically it says Andrew Starnes of Huntington, farmer, um, was. was dead on the fourth day of March, and um, it goes on to say, it's so hard to read from this distance, but it goes on to say that, maybe we have it on the screen, did I see it? Yes, I did, and down here, I think she be on page two there. I don't even think you're going to be able to really see it, but it goes on to say, he was he was buried in the burying ground. You know, he's, he's in the ground. <laughs> Dead, buried, okay. But if that doesn't satisfy you, you think he pulled an H.H. H. Holmes or whatever and went somewhere else. Um, there's, there's also a local history that comes out of Canada that I'm going to show here. Find it. That's going to put this to rest. So this here is called History of the County of Huntington. And it mentions here to start that there was an Andrew Starnes in 1822 that who had 1,000 acres and he built a sawmill on the Montreal River. Okay. And it doesn't go much into him, but it does kind of just mention him. And it mentions enough of what we need to know. This isn't clear enough, you know, there's in 1845, there's a Starnes neighborhood, but that doesn't do anything. But what puts the final nail in the coffin? Is also this. So in 18, in combination with some other records, I'm going to show you. So it says, in, in the eastern end of the township in 1835, Andrew Starnes built... A grist mill on the little Montreal. Okay, so he built another mill. So this guy knows how to build grist mills. We're not out of the stories that are out of um, Kenny Fork River. I'm not seeing anything about grist mills, but it doesn't necessarily eliminate him. A lot of people in those days and age really knew how to make those things that were necessary for survival. But what is going to really put the nail in the coffin here? Because remember, in 1821, he was building his mill and and this other Starnes is building his mill in Montreal. We have an Andrew Starnes in Smith County, Tennessee, uh, with three white males under 10. Which would be, so this is, this is pretty good assurance. Um, this, this is the best evidence I have that these 
uh, were actually the children of the Andrew Starnes we're talking about here, in that Henry being born 1811, Friedrich 1812, and Charles 1817, they fall within the date range of their age as listed on this 1820 census. Andrew falls in within the date range, and Jane and Elizabeth fall within the date range. Where's Susanna, you ask? Well, she already married John McGinnis. The first child was born in 1828. I'm assuming that we have record of. I'm assuming she uh, married him actually uh, before 1820 because she's not here. Now, there's one child not identified but under age 10. And I'm assuming that child died, and I don't have that in my records. Now, let's look at 1830 and see what happens here. 1840 is a mess. And I, I, uh, so this one is actually indexed as stands. Now, what evidence do I even have that this is even the right person? Well, according to what's been gathered by a very good researcher, um, Tanya Carden, I think. God, if I get this wrong, I'm going <laughs> to... I don't want to. Trish Carden. By Trish Carden. Um, <coughs> she's put all these families together and worked them back and placed them here with, with Andrew, right? I don't even have evidence. The only evidence I have that her first name is Catherine is her appearance in Henry's census that I just showed you. And the work she's in, she's worked downwards also. and this, of course, Susanna had married Andrew McGinnis, right? And the next child had, had because William was born 17th of November 1830, they were married, obviously, before that date. And it was Bennett Braswell, who's, who's mentioned in some of the history accounts, so there's no doubt that's true. And so, and then Jean had married John Williams before before 1825 is what I should have. Um, and so when I look at this and I don't see any of the girl uh, the girls in the household, I know why because they were all married before 1830. Again, we have a young a guy that didn't make it out and uh, a young girl that I can't identify, that everybody else fits in the right spots. If I say Charles is born in 1817 and not 14, <laughs> which the, the, the records vary, and I think maybe one's the, a correction. Anyway, so the three daughters married Williams, McGinnis, and... Braswell. So when I look near here, in fact, there's um, some of the later generations married Cogginses. <coughs> but I also found on this is so complicated to remember everything. Here is also in Smith County, Tennessee, a Richard Roswell. Which is very satisfying <laughs> because it's supposed to be Bennett. But there he is in 1850, and he's in Smith County, you know, Tennessee. This this could be Andrew Starnes, but the age, all the ages work, and so it's got to be. And so between those two records, where it, where it, it gives a date, a date range from 1771 to 1780 for the father, Andrew there, I know, and then from the 1820 census, it gives a date range of before 1776. I know that he was born between 1771 and 1776. That's how I know that. And I know he disappears between 1840 and 1850, and I know he's in Smith County. Where he was born, he doesn't assert. Uh, Henry at one point says the guy's from Ireland, but I'll tell you, checking the passenger records, and I, I you know, the, the passenger records that earlier either are 
so, just sorely incomplete. Or, you know, he didn't come over from Ireland. <laughs> you know, an earlier generation arrived from Ireland, but not, not this one. But he's certainly not the son of Nathaniel Starnes who came out of Virginia, or Jane Williams, which was the only assertion I've ever seen as to who his parents actually are. Then there were just other hints and clues that are included in Trisha Carden's work. And one set of those hints includes uh, those hints includes the fact that um, she says, okay, there is a there's a very there's a there's a gravestone that's somewhere down in Alabama that's pretty prominent for a Catherine um, Cheryl as well, and she married a man named Servier or something like that. And um, I don't know what the details of her life was, but it seemed like she was a big deal. And somewhere in the story of what's been done by Trish Carden, she says that her great grandmother was owned, or was said to have owned the flute that was John Servier's. But what proof that provides, I don't know. Uh, you could suspect that if she was Catherine Sherrill, that she was the niece of the woman that married John Servier. But again, the records are so far back, and they're in a place like Tennessee, where you just you're not going to get anything worthwhile unless it was unless it was past 1850. You know, even with all the transcriptions they've done, I can't find marriage records for most of these children as they're. Their asserts. I got a before here for McGinnis. I've got before for, for Broswell. I've got before for you know. And, I, and there's a lot of marriage records that are transcribed out of Tennessee. They're just not here at this point. Can't find one from Henry. Can't find one for Frederick. And I don't even think I found one for for Charles. They're saying it was Nancy Rafferty. I don't know where they get that. Um, and I don't know what death certificate they're going to get or find unless they have it. Or maybe it came out of Grayson County, Texas, that's going to tell them that the last name of the mother is Rafferty, because I, I don't have any record to corroborate that. But that would be the only pathway to go is to try to see if you can get a death certificate of Texas and see if it names the mother. So um, <coughs> that's that. So I've worked my way back. I haven't really been able to... Uh, these, these older censuses are done so poorly. I mean, on the scans that they have, you can tell there's a Broswell here. It looks like it says Richard Broswell. It says like it says William McGinnis, and this is Smith County. Then you have the problem that, well, DeKalb County was broken off from Smith County in 1838, yet the 1840 census is still calling this Smith County. So are these are the right records. I don't know. I'm certainly not finding that John McGinnis is the head of a household, so I can't go from there. So it's really stuck. And then you look at the gravestone records for, and there's a whole story behind what happened to the graves. At, in general, according to the, um, I actually even found the history of Long Branch, Tennessee, the town they came out of. And according to that history, um, this Charles Starnes here donated some of his land to be set aside for, to be used as a cemetery. I've also read general descriptions of DeKalb County, and those general descriptions say that back then there were graveyards in people's backyards, front yards, sides of hills, all, just all over the place. And so when the, the Army Corps of Engineers came in to put the, um, the dam in, uh, they had to move these graves, and they picked a um, Mount Haldy Cemetery that's near Smithville in DeKalb County to move them to. And they didn't destroy any of the gravestones, but the problem is, is that a lot of the, as far as I know, but as far as I know, the, the, a lot of these gravestones don't have dates on it, and, I, and I'm getting varying records, and I've got someone that had the gumption to it causes me now not to not to trust at all the the um, the find a death records for the cemetery. Someone had the gumption here, 
this is this is a laugh. So you go to the find a grave search results for Mount Holy Cemetery um, in Smithville, DeKalb, DeKalb County. It's got Andrew Starnes. It's got birth date unknown, death date. It says is March fourth, eighteen forty-two. Well, by golly, that's the day this guy in Canada was buried. <laughs> March the fourth, eighteen forty-two. How did he get into Tennessee? Did they did they move him? Did the Army Corps of Engineers move him? No, the Army Corps of Engineers did not move Andrew Starnes. These are two different people, and so they should have marked it. And there's no photograph of this gravestone. And the reason why probably there is no photograph of this gravestone is because it doesn't have a date on it. And that March 4th, 1842, is an invention out of someone that was trying to find an answer. It didn't have all it didn't look at all the details, didn't have the the, the luxury of seeing the local the local biography that comes out of Canada. This County of Huntington didn't look at the earlier census records when he's living in DeKalb County. The Andrew Starnes were interested in is living in DeKalb County between 1820 and 1840 with children of the right ages living in his household. And I will admit that the 1840 uh, record that I found that I think is for him just is a horrible match. Poor match if at all. Yeah, nothing fits in. None of the date ranges fit in there, but those, you know, those could all, that could be explained by the fact that some of the children's, uh, some of his children's, some of his children's could have died and some of his grandkids could be living with him. But still, it's got Andrew Starnes is between 80 and 89 when his birthday range is nowhere close by the other two. And this again is in Smith County, not to call them. And you'd think by 1840 they would know, but there is no there is no Starnes that I found in the 1840 census in DeKalb County. That's an Andrew. And you'd think that if we're going to say that the father of all these people was in fact and indeed Andrew Starnes, that we would have an 1840 census where everything matches up something closer rather than an 1820 where more can go wrong, but then again, all the kids would have been out of the household by then. So I guess you know, it's reasonable to assume, but but this, you know, putting this guy's death record on a find a grave <laughs> website as if it's the inscription on the stone and then just slightly putting a picture of the front of the cemeteries, if you've gone in there and transcribed it, it's not going to work. It's going to mislead people and people are going to start asking questions. The best, the most authoritative transcription of death records for that website is found in a book called The, um, the Gravestones of DeKalb County, Tennessee, and it's on the Tennessee Gen... It's been transcribed and put on the Tennessee Gen Web database. I, I would view that as authoritative, and those gravestones that are there have absolutely for at least for the Henry and Catherine that appear, there's there's no date. Now, what doesn't make sense to me is, although I don't have any evidence that Catherine never made it down to Kentucky, so I can't really say that, actually. I was going to say that it wouldn't make any sense if she went to Kentucky, why she'd be buried back up there in DeKalb County. The other thing that doesn't make any sense is if it was just the son Charles partitioning off his little portion of the cemetery, then why do some of his brothers and sisters appear buried in that cemetery, and why Why is it that Andrew Starnes and Catherine's stones are also in that cemetery? Because basically that cemetery was moved to Mount Holly, and they're all there. Of course, I don't have the benefit of seeing any death certificates. None of them have been released by Tennessee, so Tennessee's not helping it. It's making it a bigger mess, so they can collect their $20 of clerk's fees and give people a reason to waste their time sending stuff in the mail and clerks looking things up rather than something else. Okay, so now here is, this was a little bit disappointing. I was excited when I found this. In fact, here's the more authoritative transcription of the, the gravestones of DeKalb County. And, and there's also a record on Trish Carden's site of what the Army Corps of Engineers, the graves that the Army Corps of Engineers actually moved. And of all these stones that are here, um, I've only been able <coughs> to fit into the tree that's already been laid out by Trisha Carden. 
the ones that are highlighted in blue, but there still are others. And Williams, I can't really connect. Again, there's just a lot of missing dates here. Without dates, without death certificates, you might as well just not even... <laughs> It, it isn't really proof of much of anything. Uh, it doesn't really help you solve anything. Because if you have that, you're stuck. Now, just for mentions, in this, now, two, two things. There's there's a website for for the um, for the um, Long Branch community up there in Tennessee and they go into a little bit of their history and it differs a little bit than this I guess transcription of a book written by Sam Denny in 1975. Um, this here <coughs> says that Andrew Starnes and it asserts and I provide any proof that Andrew Starnes is one of the first families to live here and he was from Germany. Now I don't know if he's getting that from some of the other stories that I've heard and there are some other stories uh, that are related to to the Starnes family that are on some of these these web boards, and I'll get to that after I get in, get to this. Um, so, if they found a record and they can state as fact that he was from Germany, I'd like to see it. Um, maybe they could scan it and put it up on their website somehow. <laughs> you know, give the benefit of you know, the other people. I don't know how they'd be able to tell that. It'd probably be in some to Kalb County archive, if if at all, but uh, but I'll go in. Another thing I'll go into there. There are an awful lot of records on this website uh, on Ancestry.com about just various details of very. There's one record for a J.W. Starnes that had a wife, uh, Mary, and two children that was just. 100 pages big of scans. It, it's, none of it was readable, though, but <laughs> it was there. <laughs> well, some of it was readable, but not much. So here, in this history, it starts to talk about things, and this this history here declares that Bennett Barnswell was the first um, inhabitant of that the town of Long Branch. He had one son that we know of, William Andrew Barnswell. Um, at least so far that I know of. Um, now they're saying that they think he arrived in 1830 or 40. Well, I know he was there in 1830. In fact, um, the, I do, the problem is, well, I don't know if I know he was there in 1840. The problem that I have with all these census records and even some of these land records is you just don't know exactly where on the map these things are. And with all these counties that have, you know, when Smith with DeKalb County breaking off of Smith County, the only evidence that I can say that he was not there, or even in 1840, uh, is that, that the census takers thought he was in Smith County. But this is such a, rem a remote area, they could have been wrong. <laughs> they, could have they could have thought they were still in Smith County and actually be in DeKalb, you know, so all right, I'm, I'm not going to, so like, he could have been there as early as 1820, the first census I see with him. And he and he may even be there in the 1810. I just haven't found it. And um, but he might not have ever arrived at at this town, Long Branch. He was in the county or nearby in a nearby county as early as 1820. That's certain. But besides that, no. Um, it, it's disappoint. This thing is disappointing in the fact that. There's a lot of details for all the other families, but the Starnes's. And the Starnes's, they just say, oh, he had a farm here, and now some guy owns it. We don't know who he is. So here is, uh, the land now belongs to Mr. Maynard. It doesn't do anything for me. I knew that, um, Bennett, I guess this reinforced the assertion that Elizabeth Starnes married Bennett Barneswell, right? All these things, like they have Macy Green and Helen Fisher and all these, but not the first people. They don't know what happened to them. <laughs> uh, they do talk about um, Charles um, 
doing a land grant for the cemetery that was later moved by the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, we don't have a complete record of Mr. Andrews' wife, Sarah's descendants. I find that very interesting. And truth be told, we don't have the name of a wife in any of the census up to 1840. We don't. We do have a Catherine Starnes appearing in the household with Henry, and presumably that would be something, you know, a stepmother. I haven't seen too many stepmothers follow into the household of a, of a son or daughter, but I have seen the natural mothers follow into the household with a son or daughter and other things, but I've seen only seen a few times. Um, I've done a lot of research, maybe three, four, or five times, and uh, this is one of them. And um, But you can't really say, you know, we don't have a marriage record, and you can't really say that that was Andrew Starnes' first. He could have had more than one wife. We don't know. We're assuming, we're putting that up there, and until we, see, again, until we see death certificates, and I don't think we're going to get one out of Izzard County, Arkansas, uh, there's something like a death certificate that's going to say, last name of the mother, it's just not going to work, or a marriage record like they had in, in Canada this early, they would have marriage records that say who the parents of these people were when they married. We don't even have marriage records, and now they didn't do that in Tennessee. They just had the name of the two people, and that's it. So it's, it's tentatively Catherine Unknown is the mother, and Andrew Starnes only by his, the appearance of a Starnes in the area in Smith County that was a part of DeKalb and a, the report of a gravestone by the Army Corps of Engineers that an Andrew was there. It places him there, and we have date ranges between 1771 and 76. It's something you've got to figure, kind of figure out and as a possibility. And there could be there could be other Starnses. There were in, in 1840, the number of Starnses in the country, households in the country, was ninety-one. The number in Tennessee, and this may be a little better for the argument for it being Andrew Starnes's father. It's actually 17. I mean, it could have been, you know, and these. this is by Soundex search. And, you know, things can go wrong with the, you know, things can go wrong with indexing, too. If the writing's poor or the indexer is overwhelmed and tired, and, you know, they, the combination of those two things it ends up in errors. That that is that's a possibility, and that's the state of the records that we have. You can't really check up. The only signature you can really test for in these older censuses are the date ranges, and you have to already know when the other children were born and see if it still makes sense working backwards. As far as I know, or have some kind of uh, local history that's going to give you enough detail to say. Andrew had this many children, this, 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 and this, and he died this and this. Well, we don't have that in this history here. And what we do have, the detail is disappointing, and a lot of it's just about the children of, and just mentioned, oh yeah, well, he was, uh, Charles was the son of Andrew, but that's it. And even here, it says Charles had a wife named Nancy, I'm not so sure it mentions their last name was Rafferty here. If it did, that'd be quite a fine. And then the assumption is that whoever compiled this was looking through the old dusty records, making notes and incorporating it into his work rather than going by what someone just told him. Right? Um, yeah, I don't even see a Rafferty, Rafferty as a last name in here anywhere. Um, whenever you see a marriage record that doesn't give an exact month and day and place, it's an invention of some sort. Either it's something that someone's figured out, 
or they got in directly by death certificate or it conveniently works and I think that where they get the shareable from is um, you know the the family story that that the great grandmother owned a flute that was owned by John Sevier, so therefore it had to be Cheryl. Maybe that's the closest thing I could think of where even that came from. Um, so we got a bit of a mess, and I placed the biggest fault of the mess with Tennessee. The next fault I I place in some cases, especially with this find a grave thing here. I mean, this is a burial in Canada, for God's sakes. Um, is just people trying to find answers. And it seems to work, so let's go ahead. But what happens is, is that every single, if you get one ancestor wrong, every one of them working back is wrong, and you're wasting your time. Those are not your ancestors. Those are just the history of some family that's not yours. So you may work your way back um, if you find it's it's not safe to do that with with um, with uh, with any mother of a family. And the reason why is because you don't you have no no assurance whatsoever you're ever going to get back to an ancestor of yours. None. For example, if, you know, I happen to pick of, you know, of my, um, let's say I was trying to figure out, I knew I was a Leone, and I knew that my dad was born in Tampa, and my grandpa was born in Tampa, and I knew that Giuseppe Leone's family was there, and I, I knew all about him. I, I had a wife named Maria, and they came from Santa Stefana de Quisquina, which happened to be my history. And I just didn't know which one of the sons was the father of my dad. I would... I'd be wrong in the first generation if I picked Pete, his younger brother. Pete, Pete was his dad. But I'd be right when I got to Giuseppe. Or... Just say I knew we came from Sicily, and there was only five Leone families in Sicily. Eventually, all the Leones are going to branch from one place. If, it was, if it's a small enough area, and you know, it's safe to do that. So in this case with Andrew Starnes, it, it's safe to do that. But if I were to say that, you know, um, if I picked Pete, her, 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 his wife's last name was Rosati, but, you know, I, I descend from Gladys Ruth Brooks, right? So I'll be studying, I'll never get to the Brooks and studying Rosati's going backwards. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe before the, before time, you know, records were written, but that, you know, it's not going to, uh, you're going to be wrong on all those. It's not safe to do, just unless you have something to go by. Now, could be, some people have, and, and that's the next thing I'm going to get to. There's, there's, it's just inexcusable, really. Genealogical records are so far scattered in so many different places that um, if you ha if you do happen to have genealogy records sitting around somewhere in some dusty old box and you just haven't bothered to to whip them out, well, there's someone out there struggling to try to find an answer, and you're, you're there's just really no excuse for it. Just get them, get the information out there in some form or the other, and. And it's best to just scan the records you have rather than just say, well, this is what it was, and that's it. Because just because you know doesn't mean everybody else is going to know, or no one's gonna, no one knows you know, and no one's going to know you knew later on when they're looking. <laughs> um, okay, so where's some of the correspondence I'm getting from here? This here is a thread that gets into speculation about whether... This was the same Andrew Starnes from Canada. The guy that they were talking with does provide the records, but they still kind of wonder, you know, well, he was from America at one point. He must have gone back. <laughs> so it kept, you know, it kept coming up. And then, um, good question by Trisha Carden, trying to find it. This is back in 98, trying to find out 
there's a marriage record, but I still don't know where she gets Cheryl from. Or if it's she or she got it from somebody else, I just don't know. I might want to check them. You know, I, I probably should. I should probably check the International Genealogical Index. And it'll be quite, it'll be proof of what I try to say to have transcribed documentation and not just references and genealogical records to get this mess cleaned up. In general, overall, if I find in, in the Gen International Genealogical Index, um, Andrew Starnes with the Canadian Andrew Starnes death date, <laughs> attached to the man from Tennessee. Now there could be some more records. Family search. This 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 interface used to be a lot better than it is now. It used to be you can search for things and you'd find actual original records and be able to download them and keep them. No longer. They've they've sold out to a lot of different places that have their records and it's not always ancestry.com and so now you're stuck paying 16 different memberships where they have the records themselves already. So um, I don't think this is the International Genealogical Index, but I'm going to look for um, Starnes. Roughly, really, birth dates are being given out right now in some of these genealogies. Um, even for some of the leading probably the, the best researcher out there, I, I count as, as being Trisha Carden. What do they have her estimated as her birth date? His, his birth date. By the way. If I ever find it, and I probably never will. <laughs> There's so much here. It's down here. Okay, well, the Ghana is about 1770, and I, uh, that's that's pretty close to what I came up with 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 the two. You know, and you can see how accurate those. If that 1840 census actually was Andrew Starnes, then you can see how accurate they can or inaccurate they can be. But 1770 seems to be about right. And the only problem I have with this is this John Starnes down here. No. Um, his mother would have been 50. If that's the same mother that was living with Henry Starnes. Otherwise, since Taker had the date wrong every year, but her, her age works for two of the censuses being in the right age and the right range. See, I just want the International Genealogical Index. This is not what I wanted. Because this is just like some collection that's now turned into like a new version of the Ah, brother. I found it before. Like this. Ah, forget it. It's, it's hidden somewhere. 
I know it's at familysearch.org, but I don't like this. I'm just wasting time. I don't need to prove anything. I mean, let's just go over some of these other little stories that are here. Some of these are disturbing to me, actually, because they just don't really. A lot of you know, a lot of people are being taunted here for years on end. So you know, people have been writing emails trying to get answers for over ten years, and then there's someone that gets on the phone and. Um, Some of these stories are just kind of odd. Or they, they just kind of they ex they explain away what the answers people are looking for. So, like, there's <clears throat> someone here saying that uh, I'm not going to mention her name, but talking to somebody else saying that I was looking frantically for my copies of the information that I had about. The connection back to North Carolina, and I, my mother was 40 miles away, and I can't get to it. And no follow up. <laughs> you know? Um, then there's this um, Starnes Family Association because they can't link back to Andrew, they just put him on the outskirts. You know, I, I don't like that either. Um, people doing lookups are, are always good. Here's a story. I, I'm not making a point right now. I, I don't know where this story came from. It just explains away the search people have. Supposedly there's a family Bible, okay, that was sold to Bennett, the son of Andrew. I don't know why anybody would sell their Bible to a child on their death. I think it would be given to them, if anything. And then, but but whoever's tried to find this, no one of the Braswell ancestors has any knowledge of this Bible. Um, then there's supposedly, I don't know where they get this, uh, Frederick supposedly had a family Bible, but it was buried with him because it was in German and no one could read it. These things just kind of like, God, yeah, I, why? <laughs> um, another story about how Andrew Starnes lost track of his brother and came through the brand, the port of Pennsylvania, but don't know where he, don't know where the guy ended up. Supposedly immigrated his German ancestors to Pennsylvania. Well, that could be true. Uh, the, the passenger lists that I've seen in Ancestry.com have no Starnes coming on any passenger list until the mid-1800s. But I can't claim that those lists are complete. Okay, I really can't. And so um, I guess I could try to see if they have anything here. He certainly didn't come from Canada. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put in his year, 1775 to 1840. I'm not going to find it, I'm sure. And then I had a few interesting finds in the Kentuckiana Digital Library, but none of it really... You can see there's a lot of different Andrew Starnes about South Carolina, Mississippi, but since we know and we can place... We got that gravestone that, that was at the... We know that he was from DeKalb County. We know it's likely... The Henry Starnes was the son of Andrew Starnes, and from that county, we know the historian mentions his name, doesn't mention Henry by name, but they're all there in the same general place. And so, it's right now, it's the best guess that we have right now. And what annoys me about this family search is when there's just so many stinking senses. I'm Okay, now they have four naturalization records, and the closest they get is Stern, and that was in, in nothing close to, to to Andrew. And this would be the only generation <coughs> by which that story could be true. 
assuming this is a complete set of records. But I can't guarantee it's a complete set of records. So I can't speak with any authority other than I have limited assurance that it isn't the case, right? Just like I have limited assurance that Henry Starnes was the son of Andrew Starnes because they, well, he came from around there and Andrew Starnes was the guy that owned the household there, but I don't have the final proof. Uh, then I tried to just trace forward all the children, and I tried looking for marriage records for a lot of these. They had a lot of children according to the the census that came out in 1850, 60, 70, 80 in this area <coughs> for the descendants, and it was just absolutely disappointing. I'll just give you an example. Like here's Bennett Browswell, and I'll, or I'll do Henry. That's probably better. So I'm looking for a Delilah, and I've got, you know, I've got my parameters in there. I'm doing my search. I even go directly into just the Tennessee state marriages and look for uh, Starnes. And although this is a little bit, in fact, I probably should do by Henry because they're now calling her Delilah Starnes. <laughs> so I'm not looking for a Delilah Starnes marrying a Henry Starnes. I'm looking for someone, Delilah, someone that married a Henry Starnes. Now here's a marriage in 1852 to a charity kid, and I've seen the original record. But the problem is, is that Henry Starnes was already married in 1831. So even though I see an abundance, pages and pages of these Tennessee marriage records, um, Tennessee, Tennessee, Carnilla, Thomas, you know, no, you know, a lot of just falls, you know, nothing's really close because it isn't there. Um, now in this county, they really didn't have churches. Um, they did have marriage licenses. I've seen some of them issued, but and the earliest ones I've seen issued are as early as 1829. And there is a actually a John Starnes that married a Catherine. So there were other Starnes in this county really early. Um at least eighteen twenty six. I remember Andrew was born in seventeen seventy. So and I can't really definitively say that, yeah, that was Andrew Starnes' son, except for that they were just, they're all were there. You know, at least the commonality between the children that uh, Trisha Carden has together is that they were all buried in the same place. And then, let's see, what other points? Oh, another point that I have to make, and this, this I found. Now, what... What I've noticed is when you have the benefit of a piece of so a software to help you put things together, it, it tells you when stuff doesn't make sense. And I'll tell you one interesting thing that I found about A. Frederick Starnes that lived in DeKalb County and that did have a wife named Susan is that I don't think that was the same Frederick um, that was married to his uh, first wife, said to be... And I've got her as Mary Unknown, but it was Mary Exum or something like that. I don't even know where they got the name from. There's no marriage record. I don't have any death certificates. How do I know? So for me, it's unknown. And this Frederick was said to have had three wives. Uh, the first dying before I had that. that that 1879 was a marriage date. The last time I've got Frederick Starnes, he's in the household, I think, with Mary up until 18... Let's look here. He's in the household there in 1860. And 1870. So that's so quasi accurate. The last record that I have of him in his household with Mary really is 1870. I'm, I'm going to say after 1870 for both of these. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because now supposedly he remarried. There's a couple of marriage records here I'm going to get to. Um, <coughs> 
supposedly in 1880 after having seven children with Mary. And the next, this F. Starnes, who we don't have an 1890 census to tell us we have the right one, nor do we have a continuation of children. All we have is an age that is three years apart. We are in DeKalb, Tennessee, but this time we're in District 15. I don't know what that means to any anything. In this case, uh, instead of Pennsylvania, the mother's birthplace being claimed as Mary, in Maryland. And we have, we do have, in 1879, a marriage record between a Frederick Starnes and an Elmina Gardner. And then all of a sudden, Elmina appearing here, 31 years junior to Frederick, with just a boatload of kids. The problem is, is, when I check the 1870 census for, say, LB or AJ there, they aren't there. All the kids had moved out by 1870. This couple's done raising children. And if Mary did indeed die <coughs> by 1880, which I think she did, and I think Frederick did too. This isn't him. And we look at the marriage record, maybe it might give us a clue as to what their age are, but it doesn't. They don't give us that benefit. They just, here we have two different sets of records, and this is the minister scribbling down that he looked at a marriage license issued on the 17th and performed a marriage on the 18th. Now, fortunately enough, there was a very poor marriage license here with blurred and looks like backwards writing, but <coughs> all it has is <coughs> an E.A. Coggins, actually. Not... <coughs> That's actually what this tries to say here. Or, uh, scratch out something going around around. around. I mean, this this is a real leap of faith to say this is right, um, and <laughs> then we, you know, we got only kids with initials, which I have yet to be able to identify. I don't know who Al Albert Mason is, and there we go. I mean, is this the same guy? No. LB is LB and AJ aren't in the other the previous census. Why'd they move back? Why, well, why wouldn't they be in the household at the age of three and one? I mean, unless the ages are wrong and they what skip them in the 1870 census, but these are 50 year old people. Did the person mistranscribe? Um, no. Now the land is clearly being divided up. Joseph and Peter. It's another thing that supports the idea <coughs> that <coughs> these are children of Andrew is that um, cracked, I'm not even sure that's showing that their kids, the Peter is the son of probably Frederick or Charles here, this is 1870, that's kind of late um, so that's where we're at, I think that's the end of the line for, for Andrew Starnes unless someone whips out the family Bible and shows someone instead of saying it was buried with Frederick. I don't even see a passenger list. I don't see... So, no, he didn't remarry Elmina Starnes. I, I have tremendous doubts about that. Uh, relationships stated in the household here. Just to put the icing on the cake for this one is daughter, son, daughter, son, son. So, we have a three-year-old daughter and a one-year-old son that wasn't living in a household in 1870 suddenly showing back up when he marries the second wife doesn't make any sense to me. And the marriage took place with his second wife would have been when <coughs> uh, after all these five children were born, five children additional to the already um, seven that he had by his first wife supposedly.
doesn't make any sense. And then after that, supposedly married a third time to what's stated as Susanna Unknown, which is really cutting, it's really not giving much. And, okay, so this Susan Starnes uh, may, uh, might have, well, this could be a second wife. Uh, but the, I, I still have yet to find his 1880 census record. That, that's that other one's not it. It couldn't be. And <coughs> this um, Susan Starnes continues to live in a household. But the Susan Starnes originally was Susan Coleman. Now she's listed as Susan Unknown, and they I know where they got that from. It's going to be from the court record that I'm going to go into right now. She first married an, an Amon Starnes in 1869, and his his connection to the family is completely unexplained. I don't know if he had any children by her. I can't find him as a head of household anywhere. And um, in fact, this was in 1870. I can't even find him in the 1870. And it could be because the writing is so goddamn poor. And, and the for all I know, it's Andrew. <laughs> Second wife of Andrew, you know, I, I just, who knows, right? Um, I don't even see any children named Andrew on the records that I find, but, but, I know this for sure, that this Susan later did remarry a Frederick Starnes, but his, his connection is not explained. It's not explained at all. This is a different Frederick, and I don't think he would be marrying at the age of I've seen it before. Marriage is the age of seventy-six, but that—that that was that, that you know. There's strict, there was a motive behind that. That was wealth. <laughs> In the case of Dr. Charles Morton, but this no, I I don't think that you know. <laughs> and um, there's the marriage license. I, this Susan Starnes was originally Susan Coleman, and then she married this Frederick Starnes. Okay. And then by, 19, by 1900, he is dead. And he is about the right age. The problem is that we have a mismatch of children. And we have a huge gap between the birth date of this the birth year of this Jane Starnes and the birth of this AJ, which was born um, in 1869. So we're expected to believe that this Mary continued to have children up to 1869, but the census taker. And all the children happen to be away or somewhere else in 1870, and that's why they're not in there. We're supposed to believe that if we're going to accept that as an explanation. I don't. But this this Susan, who married this Frederick, ended up um, having one child named Maggie D. Starnes by Frederick. And that Maggie D. Starnes married a man named Samuel Jackson, and there was some debt involved, and some guy decided to collect on the debt by foreclosing on their property, and I don't know what the actual outcome was, but the basic facts of the family were that, one, this Frederick Starnes made no mention, if it's if it's true that Frederick Starnes, if this is the same Frederick Starnes, and he had these seven children and the other six, uh, one, two, three, five, twelve children, he forgot about all of them all, he disowned them all, and decided to only give his money or his land, all of his land, his one child, Maggie, who was an infant at the time, with his, <laughs> with his third wife as trustee. We're supposed to believe that, too, because that's what happened here. He, uh, this Frederick only left his land to one person, and that was his daughter, Maggie. So I'm absolutely convinced this is a different Frederick. And so um, that confusion is gone. But so, again, we have evidence there were other Starns that were from the area. We picked Andrew Starnes because his gravestone's sitting in a graveyard somewhere, but by no means does it mean that Henry Starnes is a descendant of an Andrew Starnes. There's nothing to rule out the idea that any of those other nine families couldn't have moved uh, into DeKalb County along with this family. Um, there's no immigration record to show he came from Tennessee and all the ones that I've looked at. And I've gone back, I've been successful up to the 1830s. I know they're complete up to around the 1830s, and God, we're close. I mean, the, the, question, the historian of DeKalb County is questioning whether when Andrew Starnes arrived, if it was, he, he was even there in 1840. Well, I know he was around in 1820, and so <clears throat> the question I have in my mind is, 
between 1810 and 1820 when he isn't there, at least that I can't find him, is it actually, um, how complete are those <laughs> passenger lists? And if they're not very complete, I don't see why any um, serious genealogist should require that kind of thing to prove anything back to a mother country if they have analytics to help them along the way. I am going to say that, <coughs> as at least tentatively, it, this Andrew Starn seems to be the best fit, and I'm willing to accept him as the best fit. I'm not willing to say anything about who his father might be. I have no information about where he was born, where his wife was. Uh, says she's from Pennsylvania. If I find something, if I find some Starns in Pennsylvania, um, I may be willing to analytically look at it and see if I find some kind of record of some will that says my son Andrew in Tennessee, then then I'm willing to work back. Besides that, I think this is the end of the line for the Starns. So I'm done, um, and I will continue with something else if I get a chance.